So continuing in our pursuit of excellence, there's a lot of different ways we can do that. But the whole gist of why we pursue excellence, I'm gonna outline a little bit of that today. There's gonna to be some, some steps that I've simplified. I will be illustrating. Um, there will be some stories of my own personal testimony, a little bit of my own life. Um, but I do want to open up um, by reading um, the slide for our verse that we'll be going over today. Philippians 4, 8. But we're going to go 4 through 9. And if you wouldn't mind, please stand with me. We can all read it together. This is the NIV version. And I will go back from different versions of Bibles so that we can get a better, clearer picture if we can read uh, Philippians 4. It says, the Word of God says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and a God of peace will be with you. I mean, that's, that's, that's some serious words there. That's, that's truth there. Father God, Lord, we thank you for um, this marvelous day. You have given us, Lord. We are here to rejoice. We're here to praise you. We're here to just um, meet you. Holy Spirit, come down. Lord, give us um, the time and the efforts in our mind just to put everything aside. Let the words that come off my lips not be of me, Lord. Let the words that are on the paper not be of me because it's all about you, Lord. You are the audience of one. We are here because we collectively believe the Holy Spirit would meet us in this place and that you have a message for each and every one of us personally, Lord. Lord, as we um, offer up this time to you, Lord, we ask for um, your wisdom and we ask for your sensitivity, Lord. We ask for um, your love to be evident in all of our hearts individually, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So Pastor Lum texts me this morning. He says, brother, you know, I, I'll usually, before he goes on a trip or before I speak, I always send him um, what I wanted to speak on. In a little while, I believe it took him a little while to read through all my notes. Um, <laughs> I still do, and I still prepare for my sermons, and it takes me a long time only because I like to be thorough in this, in this way. Uh, but he said, keep it simple, okay? <laughs> keep, it sim keep it simple. I usually have probably two hours worth of sermon here, but I think I'm gonna, we're gonna lose people and we're gonna get tired, but I think the message, it's gonna hit you right in the gut today, okay? So if you're ready, we're just gonna jump straight into it. You know, Jesus said he came to give us life that is more abundant. Okay? So what abundance means is more than what you actually need. It's an excess. It's more than what you imagine and more than what you could see somebody else. Your needs are going to be different from my needs. My needs are going to be different from your needs. But God said, and Jesus said, that he would come to give us more than what we will ever need. Um, John 10, 10 says, I have come so that may have life and have it in abundance. That is the Holman Bible. Okay, I want to start off with a personal part of my story. Uh, I want to talk just briefly about my one-year-old, okay, Mr. Caleb. <laughs> Mr. Caleb was born about one year and a week ago. We just celebrated his one year last week. Mr. Caleb is a very awesome young man, okay? And not even my wife knows that um, shortly after he was born, and I'm going to say within the first day of him still being in the hospital, he and I had a man-to-man -man talk. <laughs> okay? It was because I had really felt an honor um, in becoming a father for the second time. 
And as you know, and as people get to know my family deeper, deeper, we prayed a long time. And um, for, for Kara, my four-year-old, we prayed how I had imagined to pray. We asked to be fruitful. Uh, we prayed for the womb. We prayed for the preparation of our mind and our body. And we prayed that along the journey and the path, that things would be just as God had made him, made her and made him. So back to Mr. Caleb. So I didn't get the chance to do this, do this with care because I think when care came, it was just, oh, she's already here. <laughs> but after having a little bit of experience with Kara, and we were um, excited to um, be receiving a second child and a boy, um, I really said, you know what, God, you know, given the opportunity, I really wanted to say this for him. So when he was in the, you know, the little clear bassinet that infants are laid in between the time of feeding and cleaning, it's clear as day, right? There's only a few things you can see inside the bassinet. First of all, the baby and some clean blankets, and that's it. It's clean, simple, pure, sterile. But when you move, when I move the bassinet towards the side windows to gain some warmth, I looked past his little fingers that were like, like little matchsticks, okay? And I saw the, um, the overhead view of the Rice University area. And all I saw was Caleb's face and I looked straight past his face and I saw, and God immediately gave me a message and that's the message that I wanted to tell him. And it basically says, in this world, you may experience tribulations and troubles, but have peace because I have overcome. That verse came like immediately because I was so proud to be a father for the first time. I was even more proud to be a father for the second time. And then when I saw Caleb, and then I saw the, the tree line over Rice University area, and it basically it was a huge expanse of world behind the little, little 20 and a half inch little baby boy. I knew that one day he was going to walk into this world. One day he may experience some trials. He's gonna go through some heartaches. But I wanted to instill and breathe and say those words over him and said, don't worry, God's got your back. Amen. Just like when I prayed to God and said, don't worry, Danny, I got your back. This is what a father does, okay? This is what our Heavenly Father does too. Yes. Okay? Today I'm gonna to be talking to you um, in coordination with uh, Pastor Lum's uh, ongoing theme of excellence. I wanted to call this one growth in excellence. Yeah. And Marianne's gonna laugh, uh, but it says being excellent. Okay? So, uh, again, thank you, Kara. Thank you, Mommy Lang, for helping me find this. It basically just perfects uh, the message today. The meaning of excellence um, only comes about when you're connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And when you become part of the family, you begin to live a life of excellence. Excellence is a standard by which, yes, it has a definition in the, in the Bible, it has a definition in the dictionary, uh, but the definition by God's terms is very, very different. Okay? The dictionary says, it's the quality of being outstanding or extremely good, it's of distinction, it's of quality, superiority, brilliance, greatness, merit, value, or worth. And in these last three or four words, the synonyms, after you're um, saved and you receive salvation, your life takes on the meaning of excellence by way of greatness, by way of merit, by way of value, by way of worth. Um, so only after salvation can you believe, can you can also start walking into a life of excellence. And before salvation, you're just merely walking in life. Mm -hmm. Two very different things, okay? Excellence will bring you beyond what the average person is gonna go through. God promised us for in his kingdom, he wants us to grow spiritually and to continue to live a life of excellence. You don't just become saved and that's it. That's the end of your story. You just become saved, life is gonna be great. You're gonna to go to heaven anyways. So, you know, let's just wrap it up and just live the next 40, 50, 60 years 
100 years, whatever it may be. Um, but I do believe that God has said, this is just the beginning. Sit tight, put on your seatbelt. It's going to be a roller coaster sometimes. It's going to be an adventure sometimes. But I promise you in the end, when you walk with me in heaven, okay, on those gold paved bricks in the mansion, the heavenly mansion, it's going to be awesome. Yes. Okay? So being excellent, we call this stage one. Okay, I'm going to call this stage one. Because I said, in its simplest form, the growing embryo is created in the image of his parents. Obviously, it takes two. We're not going there with the sermon today. Uh, but let's just skip to the part of the physical egg. Okay? For visual people like myself, this, we're going to pretend to be an egg. This is a cartoon egg, but you'll get the big picture. Okay? On the outside is a hard shell. Okay? It's a casing. And what that does is it prevents outside influence, um, prey, things of the environment. Um, it's got a little bit of hardness to it, so it's not going to be easily um, passable. I guess that's a good word to say. But within itself is obviously uh, a growing image or a growing representation of its parents. This happens to be obviously a duck egg, because you can tell. It's a duck egg, okay? The picture says it's a duck egg. It is a physical representation of its parents. Is it not? Okay? Um, it has the smallest structure of God, uh, of his parents, okay? It has the form of its parents. Um, you can't have duck parents and have puppy embryo or puppy egg, okay? It's got to match. There's no, this is not crossbreeding, this is not genetics class. Uh, I don't know that much about any of that, but I know that if it's an egg, it's an egg from the parents, okay? But deep within that little egg has the DNA of its parents, okay? It has the mindset, it has the envision, it has the vision of the parents, otherwise there would not have been an egg. Now, we all know that God said, be fruitful and multiply. So in the simplest form, what lies in that egg is a spitting image of our Heavenly Father, okay? As if that was us. If we were surrounded by a small shell, we were made in his image, guess what? If God is the God of excellence, what do you think we are? We are the more simpler version of God in his simplest form because he created us in his image, okay? So we're going to look a little bit deeper. I know that's not the end of the sermon. Um, God has the necessary steps all outlined in his word, okay, to survive, um, to thrive, okay? Survive is just merely making it. Thrive is saying, okay, I got this. Let's kick it up a notch. Okay, let's do, let's get this done. But the word of God tells us how we can live a life of excellence, okay? It is the biblical goal to be spiritually growing and to spiritually mature. The scripture reminds us a lot. It reminds us to abound or excel in Christian character. Your Christian character is how you know that you're becoming more godlike. Okay? If you were to stay and remain in its infantile stage in your life or infantile stage of your spiritual maturity, you cannot grow. If you cannot grow, you cannot be living a life of excellence because that is just a, like, uh, a life of doing good. Okay? It's not excellent. God called us to be excellent. Spiritual maturity is that quest for that character, that God-like character. It requires excellence, of course, in order to make progress. Otherwise, your life is going to be bland. God called us to be the salt, didn't he not? He did not call us to be the blah. He called us to be the salt and light of the world. Otherwise, we'll be lukewarm. Lukewarm is a very dangerous place to be. Uh, not only, you know, spiritually, even physically, if you're just barely making it and just getting by, it's not going to be good for very long. If you're just going through the motions, okay, we've heard that said before, you're just really just slowly drifting. And if you're drifting, you don't have a direction. If you don't have a direction, how can you know how to be excellent? 
So the challenge here, okay, is to do everything with all your might for the glory of God. It says in, in Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. 1 Corinthians 1, 31 says, So whatever you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything in the glory of God unto God. Matthew 22, 37, 38 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The catch of this is, you can't live any of these verses out until you dedicate your mind and your body to doing so. You can't be excellent if you don't want to be excellent. You can't attain or you can't grow to be excellent. You can't have this growth in excellence if you don't know what excellence is. Okay? You have to look. You have to be ready. You have to try your best to do everything to the glory of God. And that's the purpose of life. Okay? We all have a different journey. We all have a different calling. But if we serve and worship one God, okay, it is paramount. It's, it's 100% uh, obvious that in order to achieve this excellence that we're discussing today, you've got to want it, uh, and you have to try it and do it because it's the best thing that God has asked us to do. To pursue God, you have to be motivated by the right motives and the values and the attitude. Otherwise, it ends up being all for you. Self-significance is probably one of the most, um, you know, we don't talk a whole lot about it because it just becomes a personal issue. When everything becomes about you, okay, and everything is because of me, 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 me. You lose sight of the picture. It's not about me, me, me. It's about him, 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 him. And I've said, and I prayed it before, I always asked, you know, God to be more than what I am. I said, more of him and less of me because I easily can interfere with what God has uh, in store for me. All right, so I know everybody's dying to see what's inside this little egg. Okay, we're going to call this stage two. Okay, it's really cute. So once born, what happens? What's inside comes to life, takes a deep breath, okay? So before I drop this, so let's just pretend that it's been incubated, it's been protected by its parents, it's got the right, I think we call it the gestational period, okay? Uh, all that good stuff. It is fully formed and it's ready to come out and see the big bad world, just like little Caleb came out when it was, you know, really ready. So, ta-da! Inside, the egg has broken, and we have... <laughs> where's my picture? Where was a picture? I had a picture. There! Okay? This is stage two. This is breaking of the shell. Okay? Step, the second stage of this is, it's, being, it's gonna get acknowledged, it's gotta be fed, and the Word of God is our, what is it, Miss Jean? Our nourishment. Right? Ms. Jean and I had a very heart-to-heart -heart conversation earlier, and she mentioned the word nourishment. I said, just wait. I got something for you, Ms. Jean. So this one's for you, Ms. Jean. All right, so the little guy or little girl comes out. It is a spitting image of his parents. That shell has been broken. This is similar to when we, we become first saved. Okay? We're no longer protected by our own self. We're going to be exposed to the world. Okay. It's going to be up to our surroundings. It's going to be up to our parents. It's going to be up to our mentors. Okay, and it's actually going to be up to this little guy or this little girl here to take steps, take breaths. And the first thing that happens when he comes out, and I think this is true for almost all babies, all animals, and all everything, it gets acknowledged. Okay, by its parents. Yes. You know, I've seen mama, mama dogs come up to the puppies, and they just. Take a whiff. They go, yep, that's mine. <laughs> right? Ducks, same thing. You're like, yep, it smells like me, it smells like dad, it smells like mom. It's got to be mine. Okay? There's no mistake in every parent knows their offspring. Yes, yes. Same thing. God knows you because he created you. He created you in the spitting image of him. We don't look like God. We don't look like Jesus. But deep down in the core of our DNA, we came from a heavenly father that led a life of excellence, okay? He lived a life of excellence, walked heaven and earth, okay? He died, came back three days um, to be resurrected. So in the timing of this um, illustration, Marianne said I was a little early for Easter, but actually this came, this came from the time, the full, full uh, image came from rodeo season. 
here in Houston, Texas. And I remember going to see baby chicks and baby ducklings at the rodeo. It is a very, very big attraction. But if you think about it, it's the simplest way I can tell you how this story works. Growth in excellence requires, number one, to be acknowledged by your Lord Jesus Christ. You have to ask him to come into your life. Second thing is, he's going to be hungry. Okay? He's going to be hungry. And mommy and daddy have the chore of having to feed. Okay? You can't, this guy cannot survive without being fed. Guarantee you. It'll do okay for a little while. Okay? It, but in order to grow physically, okay, it's got to be nourished. It's got to take in all the things that baby ducks eat. Same thing with us. Baby gods or baby humans like us, we need the word of God for our nourishment. Amen. Okay? The word of God is our nourishment. Yes. <clears throat> can, I get the next, can I get the next slide? There are six steps to being excellent. We're going to briefly touch all of them because I think it's 100% important to know um, a methodology, a, a sequence of events. You can't have number six before number one. You can't be the duck before you're hatched from an egg. There's a, a source um, that has given you breath, uh, but there's also a step and a link of why things happen a certain way. Step one says you have to dedicate your life in the pursuit of excellence to be kingdom-minded. You can't be excellent if you don't know what excellent is. Okay, you have to seek excellence. You have to uh, be seen. You you need to know what it looks like. Okay, Matthew six thirty three says, "But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." This can't be done for you. Okay, um, Mama Bird can't raise baby duckling. Okay, baby duckling belongs to be led by mommy and daddy duckling. Yes, right. Does anybody remember the old song about this verse, Matthew 6, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All right? All right, Pastor Jeremiah's got me going. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you hallelujah hallelujah the second verse says you know what it remembers uh, ask and it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Da, 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 da. Okay, I learned that song when I was very, very young. Okay, and the reason why I wanted to mention that song again was I had mentors, I had Sunday school teachers, I also had parents uh, to show me what it was like to do. The Christian life. I, did, I was not born knowing how to live a Christian life. It was up to me, the will of the duck, the will of the young son, the young boy. It was the mentorship. It was the instruction given to God to instruct my parents how to teach and raise children. But had I not learned or been exposed to what things were called um, for my life to be excellent, I wouldn't know that song and I wouldn't know what that song really, really means. Yes. Another way to be excellent or in uh, egg excellence, to be growing growth in excellence is you have to have a goal or a vision. Okay, this is number two. You have to have a goal or a vision. People with no vision or purpose go without direction. Where are you going? Will you wander in the desert for 40 years? It's not good. <laughs> if I'm only going to live... You know, X, Y, Z amount of years, spending half my life wondering aimlessly, lost, confused, hurt, um, unsatisfied with life. It'd be a waste. God made you to be excellent. Yes. All you have to do is make that connection. Proverbs 29, 18 says, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. So you see, when you have a goal, 
and it aligns with what God has in store for you, you're going to experience joy. That's what the Word of God says. It doesn't say it and mean something else. It is. The Word of God is the truth. Proverbs 3, 5 through, says, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll make your paths straight. You see the nourishment is in the Word of God. It doesn't say trust in the Lord sometimes. It doesn't say um, he'll make your past, you know, really, really challenging. Um, it, you know, say if you acknowledge him, um, you have to know who him is. Okay? Number three, it's got to be a Holy Spirit-led life. John 16, 30, 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. John 16, says that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, the uh, New Living Translation and the uh, New International Version says, take heart. The King James Version says, be of good cheer. Be courageous, the Holman versions. Okay, these words tell us it's okay. Things are gonna get a little bumpy sometimes. But it says, take peace, have peace. It says, be courageous. It says, uh, be of good cheer. That really means to say, chill out. Yeah, right. I got this. Okay, had I need, you know, I could imagine if God had said, if I needed your help, I probably could have asked you, and I'm sure you would have been willing to come and help me out. But God being of excellence, creating excellence, uh, living a life of excellence, I do believe he has created things excellently. <clears throat> so that's the reason why I told Caleb that story, because this is what it reminded me of as a father. I know that one day, you know, he's, he's going to get either his heart broken, he's either going to come up to an obstacle, um, he's going to fight those challenges even in preschool, okay, all the way out to when, you know, he graduates high school, when he graduates college, when he goes to meet. Okay, we're getting too far ahead. That's, that'll be a long, long time away. Um, number four, it says, set yourself apart. In John 16, 17, it says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is the truth. You have to say no to the um, one foot in, one foot out mentality. You can't um, say that, God, I'm all for you, but you hold on to that 5% for yourself. Okay? And I think I told my mom this a long time ago. I said, in a, in a challenging situation, I said, You've got to give God 100%, yes. okay? You give him 99%, your 1% of selfishness will hinder everything that God is, has in store for you. We live in the world, but we are not of the world. That's a huge difference. It's one word difference, but it takes on a huge meaning. God created us to be excellent. There's excellent things in this world, but please do not lose sight of the one true excellent thing, okay? And that is our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? We're easily distracted, we're humans. Uh, my wife and I are watching our little boy grow. He's really, really easily uh, distracted, <laughs> right? Um, but he also doesn't know 100% what things to keep his mind on. Uh, in the same way, as we were mature and we become mature adults, we have the ability, we should have had the experiences in life to um, discern, is the best word, uh, what things are of God to lead us in excellence, what things are of the world that are great things, okay? Don't, don't get me wrong. There are good things in this world. Okay? There's success, okay? There's um, your attaining your goals, your achievements, okay? God made people excellently. Okay, to do excellent work, to have great jobs, to great families, to have great relationships. But please do not lose sight of why God made you to be excellent. It's so that you could be excellent like him. Yes. <clears throat> We're going back to number five. Number five is nourishment. Very, very key. Your daily intake of God's word is your nourishment. Okay, You can't have a meal today. We're talking about physically. If we have a meal today, we cannot abstain from our meal for five or six days in order to survive. We're going to fluctuate in our weight. We're going to get, um, our energy is going to be lacking. And some people get really, really hangry. Okay, some people, um, 
you know, it, it, it throws our balance in our life off physically. Now imagine if you didn't have your spiritual nourishment. You can have a great message on a Sunday. Pastor Lam brings out a super hot Holy Spirit led word last Sunday, the Sunday before. You take it in, you're all hooping and hollering and you're saying hoorah. Okay, and that's it. You don't pray to God. You don't ask God. You don't, you don't seek God. Um, you don't listen to God. And there's really no excuse nowadays with technology. Okay, we have podcasts. We have iPads. We have internet. We have earbuds. We can listen. Nobody can hear what we're listening to. Um, yes, I enjoy music myself. But actually, I still try to limit that amount and still get my daily intake of God's word. I do it at work. I have a new job. People know my stand and my view of my life already. I've worked four weeks at a new job. It's been an amazing blessing, but people know that when I listen to music, it's godly music. It's my praise set list that I'm doing work and research for for the next week. Um, it is podcast from, you know, John Gray is one of my favorite um, entertaining pastors that I listen to his podcast. Joel Osteen is also a big one. I actually have still have one of my first podcasts, my first MP3s of Pastor Lum when I met him years ago, and it was called But For a Moment. I still have that one, okay? That one got me through the thick, 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 yucky mud. Um, so there is really no uh, excuse to not be able to take in your spiritual nourishment. And I'm going to call that one noise cancellation. There's a lot of noise in the world. There's a lot of buzz in the world. But none of that, or a lot of that, is not even really good for you. Okay? If you seek God and you seek God daily, okay, and you seek his nourishment through his word, which is the truth, because the Bible said so. I believe in the Holy Bible to be the truth and the word of God. If you do that, okay, you will be able to discern and tell which is noise, which is of excellence, and which is not of excellence. Yes. And one of the most um, important steps, step number six, is to pray. You can't have excellence and you can't lead a life seeking God in order to pursue your character of excellence if you don't pray to God. It's like having a long distance relationship where you never contact the person, never send a message, never think about them, never let them know that you're thinking about them. Um, you know, sometimes a message from the right person at just the right time can save a life. Yes. Okay, not just save you through the day, it can save a life. That's right. Okay? It, did, it happened to me. Okay? It, I've been there and I really felt like had that one person not to say, you know what? I thought about you this week. Okay? Sometimes you think that you're in it alone. You're not alone. You're never alone. God is always there. God sometimes does not answer. Okay? Sometimes he is being quiet. He's allowing us to take our steps. Okay? But he's also never not knowing where you're going. It's up to us to stay in tune with him. Up to us to seek him. The word says, seek him and you will find him. Yes. Knock. And that door should be open. Second part of that one says, pray and fast. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray without ceasing. Yes. Now, I don't know about you, but I cannot do 24-7 of praying. I don't think that word, the word of God really means for you to just stop and not live life. Come to the altar and pray 24-7 around the clock. Forget about it, okay? Not doing it, okay? But it's in your mindset that if I contact the Holy Spirit, he's going to contact back with me. Yes. It's not a take your message, I'll get back to you when I can, okay? <laughs> if that's the God of excellence that knows every single hair on the back of your head, trust me, I do believe 100% without any doubt that when you ask him, he will answer you. Right. Be mature enough to know when the answer will come. Sometimes it doesn't come right away. Sometimes it comes right away. And you're like, I didn't know that was going to come so fast. But I'm not ready, God. God says, well, he's not going to give it to you if you're not ready for it. And he'll never give you more than you can handle. I know this for a fact. I've lived it. I know it works just like that. The word of God is a truth. It's not by accident that certain chapters happen certain way by certain authors, by certain stories. Okay? It purposely was designed. Uh, there's another uh, sermon that pa uh, pa Pastor Lam had said, purpose by design, purposed by design. 
Okay, there was a book a long time ago, it was Purpose Driven Life. It's not by accident, okay, nothing is by accident. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more of my story. Um, some of you um, probably already know this, but there's no reason why um, I have lived a, um, a chapter, a recent chapter, that it took, um, you know, I'm gonna say it took about 23 or 24 years to actually happen. I know some people pray for things and it's a season, but imagine 23 years worth of seasons to achieve something or to get an answer or to um, crest um, the plateau, okay, or to find the way into the promised land when the promised land was there. Um, back in the day, somebody wandered in the promise, outside the promised land for 40 years and all they do was had to just stop and the door was there the whole time. So I took that route. I took the scenic route. Along the way, I discovered a lot about myself. Okay, a lot discovered a lot about the world. But there was a much easier way. All I had to do was just stop, listen, and be obedient. Okay, now my parents are here, so they're inside, they're probably laughing a little bit because, see, I told you, just listen to me. I was your parent. I told you exactly what you had to do, but no, you wanted to do it your way. We let you do it your way, and okay, well, that's a long story, but we're happy you made it to where you are. God said the same thing to me. You took the long way. It's okay, but along your way, did I not take you through the coolest and wildest and sometimes highs and lows, okay, the experiences and the people that you met along the way? I can't trade that in for anything, okay? There were words that came out of that story of 23 years or 24 years. I like to repeat things in a way that remembers, that I can remember. First word is present. I had to be in it to win it, okay? You can't pursue God if you don't know God. You can't pursue God if you don't feel like you need the nourishment. Uh, you can't gain this um, character of excellence if you don't want it, okay? You have to be in it to win it, okay? You have to be present. You have to plow sometimes, okay? Plow means in seasons of time, there are harvest times and there are seed setting times. But even before you even do the seeds or anything like that, you actually have to prepare your soil. You have to plow. All right, so the first P that I put there was present. You also have to plow. You have to prepare yourself to know that what you put down and what you pray for and what you put nourishment on, which is the water and the sunlight, one day it's going gonna, it's gonna to germinate and it's going to become a fruit. It's become a vegetable. But what seed that you plant today, it eventually has to be harvested. You have to have the pursuit. You have to have the mindset of pursuit, meaning... It's not gonna be done for you, okay? You want to be excellent. Excellence can be attained almost by everybody, but it just doesn't fall into your lap, okay? It is, sometimes it's a lifelong journey. Some people can attain and walk in God's excellence early on. I'm one of those late bloomers. I have to do things that takes a long time, but I finally starting to see the picture, okay? This message began probably last summer the day I graduated from college. It took me 23 years to graduate from college. Not that I never wanted to, but because of my style and my life and my attributes, I mean, my, my character, I guess I like to do things in a, on a challenging way, but there's much easier ways to do things. Okay, some people say, you know, work smarter, not harder, okay? Um, that was pursuit. And the last P that I wanted to put in that one was persistence. And if Peter is laughing or just giggling on the inside, Peter, on the day that I graduated, told me that uh, I was persistent, yes. I was present. So I added on to that one. And I'm really taking that to heart because Peter and I have come to know each other in a very uh, awesome way. Persistence. In the way that you pursue God, you have to be persistent with yes. it. You can't come to church on a Sunday, say, God, I'm all in. I, <laughs> I got, I got it, you know, take over my life. I'll give you everything that you ask me to do. I'll be obedient. And then when God answers your prayer for that one thing that you've been waiting on God to answer, see ya, I'm gonna live this life of awesomeness. I know God gave it to me, 
but people don't see you for a while, you don't love on people, you don't contact people, those people that were uh, toiling and praying for you at the altar, those people who woke up at three or four in the morning to pray, knowing that God had sensed and told them, somebody's hurting, somebody needs you to pray, just pray. I'll give you the details later. I've gotten those messages, okay, in the middle of the night. Not because Caleb wakes me up, it doesn't matter. Uh, Caleb wakes me up anyways, but in the middle of the night, sometimes, God gives you a message when you're not ready for it. But the message is really, really, really clear. It's very important that you um, listen. Acknowledge that it came from excellence. It's not a message that was somehow seeped into your mind from the world. Okay, You have to get to a point of spiritual maturity to discern um, the voice of excellence and not the voice of the world. And the last P, or last couple of P's that I want to talk about was from my violin teacher. Her name was Joyce Durfee Gertzman. And she put this, and she instilled this into me from the time I was five or six, is when I first started to play the violin. And up until I went off to college, and um, I was able to uh, go to my first few years of college via a music scholarship. So I know that for the years that my parents were um, faithful in taking me to lessons, my teacher, my violin teacher, mentor, uh, who taught in excellence, similarly, what we're talking about today. She said, it's not practice makes perfect. Because if you practice bad habits, what are you going to get out of that? <laughs> okay? You're going to get a lot of bad results. But she said, and she twisted one word, I think my dad still even remembers. She said, perfect practice makes perfect. If you lead a life of excellence and you pursue God daily, and I know it's hard to do certain these things, your mindset and your attitude and your heart says, God, I want to be excellent. Take me through excellence. And along that journey, you'll know that excellence is your faith growing. It's your spiritual maturity growing. But most importantly, it's your excellent character growing. And if God created us in his image, just like... Mama Duck and Daddy Duck created a duck in Duck's image, okay? It's going to one day be a mature um, duck. It's going to be able to take care of itself, okay? And that's the whole, this is why we live life, okay? This is to avoid wandering aimlessly in the desert. This is just not having one of those, like, what they call it, um, what do you call the, the lazy pool around the, the theme park where you just sit on a raft? Lazy river, okay? It just goes in a circle forever. It goes like an hour. The water trickles like so slow. I mean, without the time of the day, and you have nothing else to do. You sit on this raft, and the water just takes you slow, 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 slow. But then people who want the adventure, they go to this ride and that ride. They experience this. They experience that. That's the fun stuff. Life was designed to be fun, but life was designed to be excellent. Yes. Okay, so stage three. This is the last stage I'm going to be talking about of our little duckling friend. There he is. Okay. Duck three, uh, stage three for being excellent, for stage three and beyond, because once you become duck and you can swim and you can survive, there is life beyond this stage. I don't have uh, another toy to show you the illustration. It's about the influence around you. Take to heart, okay? People who you surround yourself with, that's your influence. More importantly is your attitude. If your attitude is of an influence, a positive influence, you can get through the hard times, okay? It's friendships, it's relationships. This is influence, okay? Look and learn. Once you find excellence, okay, and you know what excellent looks like, it's not the person who drives the nicest car, Guarantee you, the person who drives the nicest car just means they've excelled, they've got money, and they drive a nice car. But that doesn't guarantee that they're happy. That doesn't mean that they're leave, living a life of God's excellence. Different standards. World standards are not our standards. Okay, We live in the world, but we're not of the world. God designed this system from the beginning of the book of the Bible to the very end for us to thrive, not just survive. If it was just surviving, okay, we could, we could probably listen to different books, different videos, and stuff like that. But I do believe God leading us in excellence, creating us for excellence, 
we can live a life that is excellent. Okay, and I'm going to close with a couple of thoughts. If we have been designed for excellence, with excellence, by excellence, then we should be excellence. Yes. And we should perform with excellence. Don't forget to be excellent this week. Okay? Don't forget to be excellent next week. Don't forget to be excellent the week after. This is an ongoing process. Yes. If you desire um, to be better than you are today so that tomorrow you are able to uh, achieve more of what God has called you to do, you have to desire to have a spiritual maturity. You have to desire to have spiritual, um, a godlike character in the most word that you can describe the situation of this, this type of character is excellence. If you wouldn't mind, please stand with me.